Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth. Thy will be done in earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the Lord forever. Pray. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For He is good. For He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. For His mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. For He is good. For He is good. For His mercy endureth forever. For His mercy endures forever. Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. King of Kings. King of Kings. The mighty one of Jacob. The mighty one of Jacob. And there is no other. And there is no other. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Today's scripture reading, Psalm 52. Why boastest thou thyself in mischief, O mighty man? The goodness of God endures continually. Thy tongue devises mischief like a sharp razor working deceitfully. Thou lovest evil more than good, and lying rather than to speak righteous. righteousness. Selah. Thou lovest all devouring words, O thou deceitful tongue. God shall likewise destroy thee forever. He shall take thee away and pluck thee out of thy dwelling place and root thee out of the land of living. Selah. The righteous shall see thee and fear and shall laugh at him. Lo, this is the man that made not God his strength, but trusted in abundance of his riches and strengthened himself in his wickedness. But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I trust in the mercy of God forever and ever. I will praise thee forever because thou hast done it. And I will wait on my name, on thy name, for it is good before thy saints. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.
Disclaimer, I'm going to do the response strategies and then we'll get into the lesson. All right, Sabbath disclaimer. And the reason I do this every Sabbath is because if somebody in here does not make it to the kingdom because of the Sabbath, it is not because I did not tell you and instruct you. All right, Sabbath disclaimer. Okay, today is the Sabbath of the Lord, it's a 24 hour period from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. I'm going to tell you what you're not supposed to do on this day first. You're not supposed to buy or sell. All right? You're not supposed to cook. That means kindle a fire. If you smoke, you're not supposed to smoke on this day because that's kindling a fire. You're not supposed to use a microwave. That is boiling or seething. All right? You're not supposed to argue with your baby mama, your baby daddy, your wife, or your husband. You can punch your kids, though. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> You are not supposed to buy or sell. You're not, if you have a business, you are supposed to close your business down because your employees are not supposed to work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, did I miss anything? I do this so much, it kind of just runs into it. All right, let's get to what you're supposed to no do. No bargains. No work. No work. No burdens. No, I'm getting to that. Well, the, the argument is kind of the burdens aspect, <laughs> but anyway. Uh, on this day, you're supposed to have a holy convocation. This is a holy convocation, a holy meeting, where we come here and we learn about God, all right? And an addendum, we're not supposed to use our own words. So talking about sports or the housewives or Donald Trump today kind of ain't the thing to do. So we're going to leave all of them outside with the burdens. Leave the burdens outside. This is a safe zone, okay? We're supposed to have a holy convocation. We're supposed to come here and learn about God. We're supposed to come here and be educated so we can keep ourselves from sin. All right? Now, that being said, on my watch, when I mean on my watch, I mean when I, when I do lessons. I do not like talking to track lights, air conditioning, and speakers. I like talking to people. All right? The worst teachers, in my opinion, are teachers that do not care if you guys are even, in other words, they're not cognizant of your understanding. That being said, multiple response strategies. If you guys understand the concept clearly that I'm trying to convey via the book, what do you do? Thumbs up. For the new faces, thumbs up. If you don't know what I'm talking about at all, you ain't, you're like, dude, you're in Fresno, we're in Vegas, what is you talking about? What do y'all do? Dude, I don't know what you're talking about. If you kind of understand, right, the concept is kind of there, and you need to get tipped up or tipped down, what do you do? Thumb to the side. You're trying to hitchhike, okay? <laughs> that being said, title of the lesson, more secunda, which is the second death in parentheses in plain English, is eternal. There's a lot of debates about, is the lake of fire eternal? Are you gonna burn forever, or are you gonna burn up, right? And there's a whole lot of doctrine from uh, Seventh-day Adventists. They don't believe you're going to burn forever. Uh, Jehovah's Witnesses, I think they believe you're going to burn up. And that's bad doctrine. That's erroneous. Like, why would the Lord say your punishment, I'm sorry, your reward is forever and your punishment is not forever? Because in all honesty, if, if I had the potential of burning up for the sins that I committed, then that's a pretty good dice roll right there for me. You know, there's some things that, there's some bad things that I would do and run and run the risk of that. I'm just being honest. But because the lake of fire is eternal, I ain't playing. I don't like lava pits. And we'll get to that in a moment. Title lesson, more secunda. The second death is eternal. In other words, forever. There is no getting out of it. There is no negotiating out of it. So whatever we're going through in our daily lives right now, there's no comparison. The suffering that we have right now for the gospel it's no comparison to suffering forever in a lava pit, point blank, all right? This is the difference between immortality and all power and authority. 
That's the difference. First scripture, let's go to Isaiah 30. I like to set the tone. And again, throughout the, talk, throughout the lesson, I'm going to ask, hey, y'all get, getting it? Y'all understand what's going on? Because I want to make sure you guys get it. After this lesson, you should be able to refute any false gospel that the lake of fire is not forever. Isaiah 30. And usually I want to encourage people, but this is to warn you and me. Isaiah 30, one verse. Where's the other Bible? Isaiah 30, one verse to set the tone. This is going to let all of us know who we're dealing with. Isaiah 30, one verse, verse 27. Go ahead, bro. Behold, the name of the Lord come from afar, burning with his anger, and the burden thereof is heavy. It's light. His heavy. It's easy. His heavy. Come on. His lips are full of indignation, and his tongue has a devouring fire. This is who we're dealing with. We're dealing with a person whose tongue is a devouring fire. Yes. In other words, the stuff that comes out of his mouth can eat you up in perpetuity. All right? Let's go to Matthew 25. God does love. He does. He loves those that love him. And guess what he does to people that, that don't like him or hate him? He hates with a perfect hate. But it's a choice. The second death was made for angels, wicked angels, not humans. We choose to put ourselves there. Matthew 25, we're going 31 through 46. Matthew 25, we're going 31 through 36. Now, I'm going to fast forward you guys to, to after the first resurrection. We're going, to, we're going first resurrection, then we're going judgment. Let's see if there's going to be any inclination that the punishment is temporary. Go ahead, bro. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. That's after the seventh trumpet right there. That's after the first resurrection and the seventh trumpet. That is the thousand year millennium. That's what we're talking about right there. I like to give timelines. Go ahead, sir. 32. Come on. And before him shall be gathered all nations. Just Israel. All nations. Just the northern kingdom. All nations. Come on. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Stop. What side do we want to be on? Left or right? Right. Come on. 34. Come on. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come ye, blessed of my father, inherit king, the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Stop. Let's let that soak in. New Jerusalem has been ready for millennia. It's been ready for us to inhabit. We have not been ready to inhabit it, but it has been created since he created this world, since he decided he was going to die. That's how much the Lord... Like, that's, that's, the, that's the thought pattern of the Lord. The end from the beginning, he says, right? Yeah. Go ahead, sir. 35. For I was a hungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. These are works. These are the works. It's not just belief. It's not lip service. It's works. You dig? Y'all with me on that? Yes, Go ahead. 36. Come on. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Come on. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? Stop. Let that soak for a second. Lord, when did we do all this stuff for you? Because I remember meeting you and hanging out and doing this. I don't remember going to see you when you was locked up in a joint. Okay. What the Lord said. Go ahead. 38. Come on. When saw, when saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked? Clothed thee and clothed thee. Or when saw we thee sick and in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. This is love your neighbor. Yes, sir. This is the works. This is how we get on the right side. This is how we get on the right side of the kingdom. This is how we get all power and authority versus just being immortal. Immortality for a mortal, for an immortal being is trivial, it's nothing. To us, we think in terms of the finite. He, he thinks, it, or should I say, the Godhead thinks in terms of infinite. They're not bound by time. So, all power and authority, or versus immortality, I want all power and authority. Everyone in the kingdom is going to be immortal. That's no big deal. Go ahead, sir. 41. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed 
and into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. Read that again. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. What does everlasting mean? Does that mean there's an end to it? Yeah. Everlasting means everlasting. If somebody's trying to tell you the lake of fire, you're going to be in there, you're going to burn up, take them right there, read that scripture to them, stop and say, so how do you explain that? Everlasting fire, prepared for, I'm sorry, did that say prepared for? Prepare, prepare, Prepare for human beings or prepare for the devil and his angels. Prepare for the devil and his angels. The Lord's not up in, in the third heaven trying to figure out ways to trick us, to kill us. Right. He's in the third heaven trying to figure out ways to stop us from driving into a brick wall. Yes, sir. Go ahead, sir. 42. Come on. For I was a hunger, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Come on. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. In other words, when you see your fellow man and your fellow woman out there and they hurt, then you can make a difference in help and you don't do it. Mm. Them angels are snitching, right? <laughs> we got a new amount of angels running around snitching, right? Going through portals, talking to God, right? Mm -hmm. Putting the stuff on the table about what we think and what we're doing and what we're thinking because our actions are predicated upon our thoughts. Yes. They like, yo, you didn't do that for them? You didn't do it for me. And here's what I got for you. Go ahead, bro. 46. Come on. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment. Temporary punishment. Everlasting punishment. But the righteous into eternal life. So here's my question. If the reward is perpetual and eternal, why would the punishment be less than that? Mm -hmm. If it's an equation, the equation has to balance out. Y'all right. follow me on that? In other words, if it's forever, if one is forever, the other one has to be forever by natural extension. Let's go to Revelation 19. Let me show y'all something. Y'all with me so far? Mm -hmm. I see some tones, Mom. Usually I like to inspire you people. I like to, you know, motivate them. Today, here's a warning. Whatever we're going through in our lives, suck it up. Keep pushing, because a lava pit forever ain't worth it. Yes, sir. Whatever you think That's is right. cracking more than this, right. it ain't worth it. Revelation 19. Now, this is seventh trumpet, first resurrection, right before the thousand years fully kicks in. We clear on what time frame this is in. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. And I saw heaven open, and behold, the white horse. And he that sat upon him was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. Who is this? Jesus. Come on. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. One crown. Many crowns. Come on. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. Would that just say he had a name called Yahshua? No. <laughs> How about Yehoshua? No. Yahweh Shah. Uh -huh. Jesus. No, it said a name nobody knew but him. A new name that actually he'll give you a stone and put on you. So while we arguing about all the names and whatnot, read that again, man. I don't think they heard that. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And he had a name written that no man knew but he himself. I think that, that name said in the Coptic, original cryptic Hebrew. <laughs> Nobody knew is my point. Go ahead, my brother. 13. Come on. And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. A separate person from God the Father. I have to stress this. A separate individual from God the Father. Not something God the Father spoke, but a separate person. Okay? It's got to be clear. Go ahead, sir. 14. Come on. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, and white and clean. Stop. Question. Armies. Do armies show up to have conversations? No. What do armies show up to do? Make war. To hurt people. Viciously hurt people. 
Go ahead, sir. 15. Come on. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nation. Wait, give everybody a hug. With it he should smite the nation. Give him a gold star. Smite the nation. Forgive everybody. Smite the nation. Come on. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. With a feather. With a rod of iron. With a pillow. With a rod of iron. Come on, man. And he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. Does it sound like somebody we need to be playing with? No. I mean, I'm hearing double, I'm hearing two-edged sword. I'm hearing rule with a rod of iron. I'm not hearing what they selling us. I'm not fluffy blue-eyed Jesus ain't this dude, man. Mm -mm. This is a pissed off black dude. <laughs> Word of money. Go ahead, bro. 16. Come on. And he asked on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That's where all them crowns came from. Go ahead. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God. Come on. That ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. Does that sound like there's not a lot of people dead? Or does it sound like there's a lot of people dead? Does it sound like there's so many people dead that the ravenous scavenger birds are going to have a field day? In Ezekiel, it talks about they're going to be burying men for like seven months. And they're going to hire people to literally go around the land. And when they see a bone, they're supposed to go get somebody so they can go clean that up so the land will be purged and clean. Yes, sir. This ain't a game. Go ahead, bro. 19. Come on. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse and against his army. Come on. And the beast was taken. And with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with, with, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. Stop. Two things I want y'all to understand. The, the lake of fire does not come into existence until Christ comes back to the earth. The lake of fire is not in the ground, it's not the core of the earth. It does not exist as it stands today. When he returns, that's when it will come into existence. And the first two people that will be thrown alive, in other words, they will be changed into immortals and thrown in the lake of fire is the beast and the false prophet. And the last thing I want y'all to glean, the lake of fire's location is in and around Jerusalem. That's where the lake of fire will be. It will exist there. Y'all with me? Daniel 7. Let me show y'all something. This is a lesson to warn us. I almost did something real stupid this week. Praise the Lord I didn't do it. Y'all think this wooden pool pit here makes me free of stupid thoughts and actions? Nope. i tell you what does do it though. The Holy Spirit talking to me, warning me, and the possibility to be thrown in a, in a lava pit. I'm cool. I don't like being hot. I like AC. Daniel 7. <laughs> Somebody got that. <laughs> Daniel 7. Daniel 7, we're going 10 through 12. Daniel 7, we're going 10 through 12. Go ahead, brother. A fiery stream issued and came forth from before him. Thousand thousands ministered unto him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The judgment was set, and the books were opened. Again, same time frame. I'm showing you a different shot of the same time frame. Go ahead, sir. Eleven. I beheld then. Be, I beheld then because of the voice of the great words which the horn spake. I beheld even till the beast was slain and his body destroyed and given to the burning flame. Come on. As the concerning the rest of the beast, they had their dominion taken away, yet their lives were prolonged for a season and a time. So we're talking about the beast and the false prophet being thrown in a lake of fire and existing in that state until the time as spoken of by the scripture. Yes, Let's go to Mark 9. Cast alive to burn for a minimum, what I can read, a thousand years. Then perpetually after that. Now, if you was going to burn up for your sins, here's my point. If somebody was going to burn for their sins, right? Burn up because of their sins. And 
I guess the false doctrine is you burn the amount of years for the sin you committed. Well, here's my point. They're still burning for a thousand years. And these dudes are the most wickedest cats on the planet. And yet they're still alive burning. Right. Ain't no burning up. Mark 9. We're going 42 and 48. Mark 9. We're going 42 and 48. Watch the warning that God's given us. Mark 9, 42 to 48. Go ahead, sir. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. Precious is the blood of the saints in God's eyes. Anybody that disrespect us, they should they be better off committing suicide. Go ahead, sir. 43. Come on. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the fire that never shall be quenched. I'm sorry, did that just say the fire that shall never be quenched or that shall be quenched? Never. What are we talking about? Like, in the Bible, all of a sudden, never means, uh, right? <laughs> never means, oh, well, there's a possibility. I don't know what they're talking about, but I mean never means never. <laughs> Right? Go ahead, bro. 44. Come on. Where their worm dies not, and the fire is not quenched. Stop. Fire is not quenched. Fire is not quenched. We're talking about Guyana. We ain't talking about Sheol. Hell, Sheol is different from, we're talking Guyana. We're talking the lake of fire burning with, with, with sulfur and brimstone. We're talking about a lava pit, y'all. I don't know if y'all ever looked up a lava pit or see how lava moves on YouTube, but lava moves like water. It makes waves like water. It's got waves like water. That's what we're talking about. Go ahead, bro. 45. Come on. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into, it is better for thee to enter halt in life than having two feet to be cast into hell. Into the fire that never shall be quenched. Yeah, that's tough to read, ain't it? Hmm. Fire that never be quenched. If someone's trying to tell you the lake of fire will end and you'll burn it for your sins, take them here and ask them why is Christ saying this? The person that is the architect of the lake of fire is telling you it's not quenched. I ain't believing no human being. Right. Every man is a liar according to what my God says. Right. Go ahead, sir. 46. Come on. Where their worm dieth not and the fire is not quenched. Why are we talking about this still, man? Go ahead, bro. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out. It is better for thee to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Come on. Where there is worm, where their worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. So the worm, huh? The worm. David said he's the worm. The worm is the more is the worm is actually the mortality and the fragility of men. Yes. That is decomposition. That is death. Here's the point. Not only are you dying. You're rotting and burning. You're rotting and burning. So that woman you cheated on your wife with, if she wants in a lake of fire, she's rotting and burning. It does not look like how you thought she looked. Okay. Vice versa for that woman that cheated on her husband. Okay? That guy that gave that that boss that gave you the job that made you work the Sabbath. If they don't come to their understanding and wind up in a lake of fire, they're burning and rotting. No one is gonna look how we ain't gonna look how we look now. All the stuff that we wanted, that we that we lusted after, that took us away from the gospel, it won't matter because you're going to be in a pit with other people, flaming zombies, fighting. I would think fighting to get to the top, just to get a, just to get like like he said, just take your finger and put that water on my tongue so I can get some relief. Why wouldn't people be fighting to get to breathe to climb out of lava? I don't know. It just spooks me out, man. Y'all with me on that, though? Graphic, crazy, terrible. I don't want no parts of it. Yes, a boss to God. Yes, a boss. Let's go to Ezekiel 43. I am not running a risk, man. I can have what I want out of life if the Lord allows me to. And if I work for it without transgression, I don't need to transgress. It ain't worth it, dude. Whatever we think is hot, ain't hotter than the lake of fire. <laughs> Pun intended. It ain't hotter than the lake of fire. Again, let me show you where the lake of fire is. Let me show you the location of the lake of fire. 
Ezekiel 43, you're going 4 through 7. Ezekiel 43, we're going 4 through 7. Go ahead, brother. And the glory of the Lord came into the house by the way of the gate, whose prospect is toward the east. So the Spirit took me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the house. Stop. Let me preface this. This is after three and a half years, after the temple has been built, after Israel has been regathered and purged out the second wave. Not the first wave, the second wave. This is after that time frame. The people that are going across the highway of holiness, they have gone into Jerusalem. All right? The Lord's house is built. He's done teaching, finishing his last three and a half years of his ministry per Daniel. And he is inhabiting his house in Jerusalem. This is what, where and what is going on right now. Y'all with me on that? Couple of thumbs. Go ahead, brother. Six. Come on. And I heard him speaking unto me out of the house. And the man stood by me. And he said unto me, Son of man, the place of my throne and the place of the soles of my feet, where I will dwell in the midst of the children of Israel forever, in my holy name shall the house of Israel no more defile. Stop. Because Israel is his name. So every time somebody looks at us and they see that we are, they look at us and think we're fools and we're buffoons and we're rapists and we're whores and we're pimps and all that stuff. We're defiling his name. We are the people called by his name. So he's like, when y'all get home and I didn't deal with these clowns, no one's going to ever defile my name again. Go ahead, sir. Neither they nor their kings by their whoredom nor by their carcasses of their kings in their high places. In their setting of their threshold by my threshold, and their post by my post, and the wall between me and them, they have even defiled my holy name by their abominations that they have committed. Wherefore I have consumed them in my name. Give me nine just for good measure. Now let them put away their whoredom and their carcasses of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in the midst of them forever. So wherever the Lord is, his people is going to be. But remember. The Lake of Fire location is in Jerusalem, in and around Jerusalem. I'll say that. Let's go to Zechariah 8. And this is important. I'm not just telling you where the Lake of Fire is for, you know, just for a thrill. It's important. I'll get to that in a moment. Zechariah 8. We're going, we're in verse 3, and we're going to skip down. The Lake of Fire is in the kingdom. The reward is in the kingdom. The Lake of Fire is in the kingdom. And it does not exist right now. Zechariah 8, we're going 3, and then we're going to dance. Zechariah 8, give me verse 3. Go ahead, brother. Thus said the Lord, I am returned unto Zion, and I and will dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and Jerusalem shall be called a city of truth. A city of pimps. A city of truth. A city of war. A city of truth. A city of clown. A city of truth. Come on. And the mountain of the Lord of hosts, the holy mountain. The holy mountain. Skip down to verse 7. Go ahead, bro. Thus said the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will save my people from the east country and from the west country, and I will bring them, and they shall dwell in the midst of Jerusalem, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God in truth and in righteousness. He's not talking about going to heaven. He's talking about dwelling in Jerusalem forever. Jerusalem is where he's going to be. That's where the reward is, and the punishment is in Jerusalem also. Let's go to Isaiah 33. This is one of those lessons where, hey, if you got something crazy on your mind going on, you might want to get some act right. The disrespect that you took at your job or maybe you disrespected somebody this week, you might want to go back to them and say, you know what? My bad. I'm sorry. Humility is better than wisdom. Yes, sir. I mean, uh, humility, what is it? Humility, pride is stupidity. Humility is wisdom. Right. Humility is wisdom. The humble shall inherit the earth. Isaiah 33. We're going 10 through 14. Isaiah 33. We're going 10 through 14. Now, I showed you where the Lord is going to be. Let me show you where the lake of fire is going to be. Go ahead, bro. Now will I rise, saith the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now will I lift up myself. Ye shall conceive chaff. Ye shall bring forth stubble. Your breath as fire shall devour you. Come on. 
and the people shall be as the burning of lime. As the thorns, as thorns cut up, shall they be burnt in the fire. Give me verse 12 again, ain't hearing you. And the people shall be as the burnings of lime. Stop. I don't know if y'all know this, but when you have mass graves, how you dispose of people is with lime. It helps to actually deteriorate the body faster. That's what the Nazis did. That's what all, all, all insane people, when they have mass killings, they kill people, they, they dig a hole, kill people, and put lime over them. Lime is associated with rot and death. Go ahead, sir. As thorns cut up, shall they be burnt in the fire. Come on. Hear ye that are far off mm. what I have done, and ye that ye are near acknowledge my might. Come on. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Stop. The sinners in Zion are afraid. I wonder why the sinners in Zion are afraid. Obviously, our forefathers were sinners in Zion, and they wasn't afraid, because that's why I'm over here speaking English. <laughs> So we're talking about something else. The sinners in Zion are afraid. Let me show you why. Go ahead, bro. Fearfulness hath surprised the hypocrites. Come on. Who among us shall dwell with the devouring fire? Who amongst us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? What kind of burnings? Everlasting burnings. Everlasting burnings in Zion. Why are we talking about everlasting burnings in Zion? Because in Zion, the lake of fire exists. And during the thousand-year millennium, people will be able to do this. Let's go to Isaiah 66. That's why I had to show you where the kingdom is, who's in the kingdom, because I want you to understand the sinners in Zion during the thousand year millennium, they shook. Parents ain't going to have to whoop their kids. All they're going to do is take a field trip to the lake of fire. That's going to get a whole lot of people some act right. Hmm. Isaiah 66, we going, this is an oldie but goodie, but again, this is why the sinners are afraid in Zion. This is why we're talking about lying and rotting and death. Isaiah 66, we're going we're gonna 15 through 16, we're going to dance. Go ahead, bro. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. It said the Lord is coming in a limo with some cake and some balloons to hug people. No. <laughs> ain't what that said? No. I'll contact me dirty sometimes. <laughs> Read that again just so I can make sure I ain't sure. For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with his chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. Now remember, I don't know, everybody who was here for the Q&A when we did the illustration of what the Lord's war chariot looks like, I want y'all to go back in your memory banks and think about those angels with the lightning and all the other stuff with his throne on top of it and understand what we're talking about. Go ahead, brother. 16. Come on. For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. I don't know what else we need to read. The slain of the Lord shall be many. Skip down to 23. This is why the sinners are afraid in Zion, though. Go ahead, bro. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another. Stop. Wait, are you keeping the Sabbath in the future? Mm -hmm. I thought That's Sunday good. was the day I'm supposed to go to church on. Why are we talking about the Sabbath in the future? Okay. Unless the Sabbath is the day we're supposed to worship him now and then. Back it on up. Give me that verse from the, from the top. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another. We got the feast days there. Come on. And from one Sabbath to another. Come on. Shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. And if they go and worship before him, what do they see? Go ahead, sir. And they shall go forth. And look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed, transgressed against me. For their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be abhorring unto all flesh. That means an abominable, detestable thing unto all mankind. In the kingdom, what we just read in Isaiah 33 and Isaiah 66, in the kingdom, during a thousand year millennium, you will literally be able to walk, take a field trip to the lake of fire, Look into a giant volcano, opening an uh, opened up volcano, and see some dudes up in there, writhing around up in there, in agony, rotting and burning. Like if your kids trip, or your wife's tripping, or your husband's tripping, or somebody in your family's tripping, you'll be able to take them and say, "Look, man, you better get some act right." <laughs> so my point is, imprint this in your mind. Imprint this in your mind. Whenever you feel like tripping, cussing somebody out, slapping somebody, or doing whatever you feel like doing that you know is contrary to this right chimp, picture a lava pit, picture yourself burning in it, and get some act right. Y'all yes, with me on that? Yes, yeah, that's harsh right there. Everybody's like, yeah, I'm with you, but I ain't gonna give you no thumb. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gotta give me 
give you a thought. <laughs> Let's go to Revelation 20 real quick. I'll get you a tongue. It's 10 in the morning, I'll get you a tongue. <laughs> That's a movie reference. <laughs> Revelation 20. Y'all ain't got to give me a thumb as long as y'all understand it. Revelation 20. Now, I'm going to fast forward past the kingdom into the beginning of the eighth day. All right? So we're going into the eighth day, right? A little bit before it. Rev uh, Revelation 20, give me 7 through 10. Go ahead, bro. And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. Stop. What I want you to glean out of this is there is human beings still on the planet Earth. So if someone's trying to tell you the rapture and all this other stuff, the, all the different versions of it, ask them, take them here and ask them, why are there human beings on the Earth then? Mm -hmm. Why? Right. If everyone's supposed to be either That's dead right. or raptured off. Go ahead, sir. Nine. Come on. And they went up on the breadth of the earth. They went to heaven. On the breadth of the earth. The third heaven. On the breadth of the earth. Space. On the breadth of the earth. On the breadth of the earth. And did what? And compassed the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Stop. This is the last hurrah right here. That's it. All aboard the night train right here. Go ahead, bro. Ten. And the devil that deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, and where the beast and the false prophet are. Stop. Mm. Where the beast and the false prophet are. Not were, not was, are. Present tense. Still there. Still alive. Still burning. Go ahead, sir. And shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. But I said tormented just... You know, Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. That's what that said. Day and night, forever and ever. I don't know why we arguing. Why are we trying to pretend like God is so, like God is so, he's so soft that he'll tell you, I'll kill you forever, but then have a change of heart. Like the people he's supposed to punish, he's supposed to punish. Not like, oh, well, you have, like, in other words, we had our chance while we're alive and we're breathing. Our daily choices and actions every day dictated where we're going to go. It's not like he's going to go ahead and throw an audible. Well, I know he's dead. I know, well, you know what? He only killed 5,000 people. Or, you, know, you know, he only lied one or, once or twice. Or, oh, you know, well, he, you know, he only cheated on all his wives. Or, oh, he, she only cheated on her husband. Or, oh, he only lied on his taxes maybe, you know, 15 times out of the 30 times he was alive. I'll just burn him up. No, dude. You know what's, what's cracking Either you act right or you get smacked right. Mm -hmm. Y'all with me on that? In real life, that's how it works, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> go ahead, brother. Oh, that's it, right? Mm -hmm. that's it. Now, let's go to 2 Thessalonians. God is not soft. If the reward is forever, then the punishment should follow suit. See, this whole thing about burning up, that comes from God will forgive you for all of your sins. That's that. But that's a lie. God does not have to forgive us for anything. Matter of fact, we need to be trying to get on his team. He, don't need, we don't need to, he doesn't need to get on our team. We need to get on his team. Right? Second Thessalonians. We're going to chapter 1. We're going 7 through 9. Second Thessalonians. Going seven through nine. Now this is talking about the false prophet or the little horn, aka the little horn. Go ahead, brother. And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God. Stop. Why are we Ooh. talking about flaming fire and vengeance? Why are we talking about that? <laughs> If God ain't with the business, then why are we talking about that? And we keep talking about it. Go ahead, sir. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction? Stop. From what kind of destruction? Everlasting destruction. I don't know what we're talking about. Go ahead, bro. Who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power? When he shall come to be glorified in his saints 
and to be admired in all them that believe because our testimony among you was believed in that day. That's it. Mm. Everlasting fire. Too many, it's too many descriptive words in with the descriptive words being used in the Bible with regard to the lake of fire is forever, everlasting, and perpetual. There is nothing in there that even alludes to being temporary. Right. Let's go to Matthew 13. Huh? Matthew 13, right? Yes. Matthew 13. Yes. And the whole reason I did this lesson was because I was doing Q&A. You missed Jude 5. I missed Jude. Yes, Jude 5. Oh, Jude. I'm in Revelation. I'm in Revelation. Oh, Jude 5. I'm sorry. Jude 5. I told you, man, my eyes are playing tricks on me. <laughs> That's why I got to read them things over and over again. Yeah, y'all got to pay attention. I might try to slip Jesus in a limo with some balloons in there. <laughs> Jude, there's only one chapter in Jude, chapter 1. We're going 5 through 7. Again, everlasting destruction, torment forever. On the bright side of that, we got happiness and health and everything forever. The flip side of that is the polar opposite. Jude. Let's go five through seven. Go ahead, bro. I will therefore put you in remembrance. Though ye once knew that though you know, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. So, so he's like, look, man, the Lord is merciful, he's cool, but he does kill people. Yeah. I want you to remember the Lord kills people. Go ahead, bro. Six. Come on. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the chain, unto the judgment of the great day. In other words, those angels know where they're going to go, and there's no way they can get out of it. Right. They got the whole prison ball and chain chain gang cracking. Go ahead, bro. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What kind of fire? Eternal fire. What are we talking about? Now, I know some people will say, well, Sodom and Gomorrah isn't burning right now. So that's just a metaphor. The lake of fire is a metaphor, brother. You're taking it too literal. Well, we just read 11 scriptures. I don't know how many verses that did not allude, but directly said everlasting doom. So you can take that gamble if you want to with this one scripture right here. Me, I'm going to use the, the amount. Of, I'm going to use odds. The odds are we're going to burn forever according to this book. Let's go to Revelation 14. Human beings, boy, we made out of mud, so we ain't got that much sense. And I know in the heat of the moment, whatever you think is, whatever, whatever sin you think is cool in the heat of the moment, we're human beings, but I'm here to tell you, don't do it. Don't continually transgress. Mm -hmm. Amen. Revelation 14, we're going 9 through 11. Revelation 14, we're going 9 through 11. Go ahead, brother. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. Stop. Does this sound good? I keep reiterating this stuff. Because at that moment, when you want to trip, transgress, and do something, you will forget. I will forget these scriptures, and I will do something stupid. Then I'll come back to this and come in my right mind. Hopefully this will be like one of those things where it's like, ah, it stays on your mind. Go ahead, brother. You love it. Come on. And the smoke of the torment ascendeth up forever and ever. Now that just says for a period of time. Forever and ever. Come on. And they have no rest day or night. Who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Let's go to Matthew 13. These are a whole lot of scriptures that talk about tormenting forever, no rest, destruction, doom, rotting, and this is in perpetuity. This is this has nothing to do, this is nothing that this isn't a temporary state, is what I'll say. So anybody trying to tell you that? 
taking these scriptures right here, back to back to back, and ask them to explain them. And if they try to get all super Spielberg with you or super philosophized out, which philosophized isn't a word, but philosophized out, just say, uh-huh, okay. Matthew 13. We're going 36 through 42 and we're going to dance. That means skip. Matthew 13, we're going 36 through 42. Go ahead, my brother. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them. Stop. Pay attention, please. Go ahead, bro. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The wheat and the tares, just like Pentecost, when we talk about bringing forth fruit, meat for repentance. Correct. You got to bring forth new fruit. Go ahead, sir. 39. Come on. The enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. Now that we have perspective, let's see what everybody's job is. Go ahead, sir. As therefore the, ter as therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels, and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend. Some things. All things that offend. Just the homosexuals. All things that offend. Just the liars. All things that offend. Just some of the people that do idolatry. All things that offend, and them which do iniquity. He covered it all. If we offend in any shape, form, or fashion, we done. Mm. No negotiation. We can't buy our way out of it. It's not pop. Mm. It's just... You get murked forever. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> Forty-two. Come on. And he shall cast them into a furnace of fire. In a pool. <laughs> in a furnace of fire. He's gonna take them on a vacation. In a furnace of fire. He's gonna gather all things that offend and throw them up in a furnace of fire. Go ahead, sir. And he shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Now, can someone just think in your mind? Have you ever been so mad that you gritted your teeth at somebody or Correct. something make you go? <laughs> this ain't gonna be because you're mad. This is gonna be because you're in pain. Right. Mm. Go ahead, sir. Forty-seven. Again, the kingdom of heaven. You didn't want to skip. I did. Yes. And again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a net that was cast into the sea and gathered of every kind. Come on. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. So shall it be at the end of the world. The angels shall come forth and sever the wicked from among the just. Stop. What? Can someone give me a word synonymous with sever, please? Tear apart. Tear apart, cut, separate. He used the word sever. Now, in, in Revelation, it talks about an angel, two angels, well, it talks about. Someone that looked like it to the Son of Man with a sickle. And it talked about an angel with a sickle. What are sickles used to do? Cut and sever. He described it as traumatic. It's not a good process. Well, hey, well, you just come over here. Everything's nice. Just come stand over here in this line. It's going to be like, get over here. That's what we're talking about. Sever. And what is he going to do, sir? Go ahead. And it, sh and it shall cast them into the furnace of fire. There shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Come on. Jesus saith unto them, have ye understood all these things? They say unto, they say unto him, Yeah, Lord. Yeah, boss. <laughs> Get it. Do y'all understand these things? Yes, sir. Yes. A couple of thumbs. One, two, three. I see some more thumbs. Now, the Lord is so wise, he gives us an example in the book of what we're talking about. This is a curveball. Let's go to Daniel 3. This is a curveball. You want to see a furnace of fire? Let me show you a furnace. Now this is the flip side of the game. What we can do, we can, so we can conform to the world and we can do whatever we want to do to save our lives. It says, he that loses his life for me shall be saved. We have to lose our life. We have to be willing to lose our life. Not only our literal life, but our old life. We have to, we have to, whoever we were, we have to die. These brothers stood for something that was thrown in a furnace, but was saved. I'm showing y'all the furnace of fire analogy. Daniel 3. We're going 1 through 5 and we're going to dance. Daniel 3. This is an oldie but goodie, but I'm showing you 
The Bible is showing you an example of the firmness. Daniel 3, we go on 1 through 5. Go ahead, bro. Nebuchadnezzar, the king made of an image of gold, whose height was three score cubits, and the breadth thereof six cubits. So we're talking 666, six, six, but that's a whole other trip. Go ahead, bro. He set it up in the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king sent to gather together the princes and the governors and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of provinces to come to the dedication of the image which Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. So this is a gangster reunion right here. Everybody's on deck. All hands on deck. Go ahead, bro. Three. Then the princes, the governors, and the captains, the judges, the treasurers, the counselors, the sheriffs, and all the rulers of the provinces were gathered together into the dedication of the image that Nebuchadnezzar the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then a herald cried aloud, To you it is commanded of people, O people, nations, and languages, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. Now we know there's archetypes throughout the Bible. This is an archetype of the beast and the false prophet and them setting up something for us to worship. This is an example of that. So we'll understand what we're looking forward to. But this is what we're talking about. Go ahead, sir. Verse 6. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. We're talking about if you don't worship this image, that same hour you're going to be thrown in a burning, fiery furnace. We're talking about the lake of fire. This is an example of what we're talking about. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8. Roll. Go ahead, bro. Wherefore at the time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. So everybody did it except some of the Jews. Some of our forefathers was like, I don't care what nobody's talking about. <laughs> Sound like us, don't it? Man, I don't care what nobody's saying. <laughs> but in a good way, though. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. Nine. Come on. They spake and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, hast made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoso falleth not down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fiery furnace. Stop. So, now think about this. We got an inaugural event of this golden image, and everybody that's there are officials. We're talking really important high people, and we're talking about the regular people. How many people do you think did not bow down to that image? Would we say a majority bowed down? Or would we say a majority didn't bow down? So it was obvious who stood out. It was obvious, because while you look and survey in the area, you see some brothers like, they got their straight Grandmaster B pose cracking. So the point is, people are snitching. We stand out. Here's the point. We stand out how we live, what we eat, what we talk about, and what we do. We should stand out. It's a good thing to stand out. During the tribulation, it's going to be a bad thing to stand out for the right reason. This is a preview of what we're going to deal with in the tribulation. Y'all with me on that? I see some tongues. Go ahead, sir. Twelve. Come on. There are certain Jews whom thou hast set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. So they snitching. Now watch this. You know this, you know this some Israelites. You know who the people of the book. You do something wrong at work. <laughs> what happens? Somebody. Let me talk to you for a second. Uh, <laughs> right? The other dude, he down there rampaging with M16s, smoking weed up in there in front of customers. Nothing happens to him, right? Well, should I say snorting coke? Because we typically don't want to smoke weed. <laughs> Can I help you? You know, that's what's going on at the job. Nothing happens to him, right? right. So my point is, when these Jews are in their Grandmaster B polls, like, I'm cool, they snitch. My point is, we're already under the microscope. Right. We're going to be under the microscope even heavier during the tribulation. Right. Get yourselves ready. Gird up. Go ahead, sir. 13. Come on. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. 
Then they brought these men before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Stop. Translation. Are you breaking the commandments? Are you are you not are you not breaking the commandments of your God? That's the translation. Are you not breaking the commandments right, of your right, God to right, have no other right. God and to worship anything that is created? And the answer to this question is what? Go ahead, sir. Now, if ye be ready. So I'm going to give you a chance now. <laughs> I'm going to give you a chance to keep your job. I'm going to give you a chance to do whatever that's contrary to the law, statutes, and God judgment. Because Satan is slick. Yeah, he'll bring it back around to you. I'm going to give you a chance. Go ahead, bro. Now, if ye be ready, that at what time ye hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of a, a burning fire. Oh, next week. You say you're going to cast you next week, so you have a chance to run away. He said, in the same hour. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. That my eyes were even tripping. Go ahead. Into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. And who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Notice the punishment in both instances with the Lord and with uh, Nebuchadnezzar is fire. Right. Like, this just ain't a coincidence that this is in a book like this. We're talking about fire. Go ahead, sir. 16. Come on. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we, who, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Stop. Is this faith? Yes, is this being bold for God? Yes, is this guts? Yes, I ain't gonna lie. Me? I probably wouldn't have wound up in front of Nebuchadnezzar because I'd have had a shootout. <laughs> <laughs> they would have brought me before him. I'd have been laid out at the crib. <laughs> but these dudes, he came, they came there and they stood up and they stood for their God. Yes, That's sir. what we have to do in every yes, single sir. instance, y'all. Even when we're going against ourselves in here, we gotta. Hey, man, maybe I should trip out. No, bro, you don't want to trip out. God's going to be mad at you. You know what? Yeah, I ain't going to do that. That's what we need to be doing. Y'all ain't hearing me. Y'all be like, yeah, what we going to do? <laughs> yeah, think about that fire when you say, yeah, what we going to do? Uh, not burn. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. 19. Come on. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Oh, he was happy. <laughs> full of fury. He wasn't even tripping. Full of fury. Come on. And the form of his visage was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Stop. Instant mean mug. Yes, sir. Instant mean mug. If looks could kill. Right? Train mug. If looks could kill. He like, y'all ain't going. <laughs> That's what he did. Go ahead, brother. Therefore he spake and commanded that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was wont to be heated. He's so hot, everything's going to burn. Everything's going to burn. Go ahead, sir. And he commanded the most mighty men. No, that we do. <laughs> the most mighty men. Super skinny dudes. The most mighty men. Big buff dudes. <laughs> to do what? The most mighty men that were in his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> and to cast them into the burning, fiery furnace. What kind of furnace? The burning, fiery furnace. Yo, get on the Schwarzenegger. Get the rock. Yoke them cats up. He, first of all, heat the furnace seven times, get the big, strong, cock diesel dudes, yoke these clowns up, and murk them. Everybody's got to see this. This is an example. You don't mess with the king. Right. He's on that time. Right. So is he humble or is he puffed up? Puffed up. Is he uh, feeling himself or is he, is he, is he contrite and broken? Yeah. Now he's feeling himself. Now my rose is flowing. Ah, you know, my, I got my perm right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he's feeling himself right now. Go ahead, brother. 21. Come on. Then these men were bound in their coats, their hosen, and their hats, and their other garments, and were cast into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. It's a wrap. Done. Now, I know everybody that was around there was like, yes, a boss. Whatever you say, we's going to do. Go ahead, brother. 22. Come on. Therefore, because the king's commandment was urgent and the furnace exceeding hot, the flame of the fire slew those men that took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. This is an example of collateral damage when you are rushing to do trouble.
transgression. You could be rushing, you could be caught up in someone else's transgression. You could be in the car with the homie that's a fool and somebody blazed the, blazed the whip that you in and you murdered because of him. Right. Collateral damage, the devil ain't playing. Right. Collateral damage, y'all, y'all ain't hearing me on that one. Go ahead, brother. 23. Come on. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell down bound into the midst of the burning, fiery furnace. Kind of furnace? Burning, fiery furnace. Come on. Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished and rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? Stop. So I'm pondering this. Man, how, how, wait, how is it? Because I always pictured it like a, like a pit and a hole. And he's posted all the way over there, and they bring the dudes over there, they chuck them up in there, get you know, get caught up and burn. But now I'm thinking it might have been some kind of thing in a room where it's like a scaffolding or something, and they can he can see them, chuck them in, and he can look up in there and watch them burn. This is just what I'm thinking in my mind. Because how did he see in there? Mm -hmm. But that's just me. Go ahead, bro. It, did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Come on. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. They got a little bit of hurt. And they have no hurt. Come on. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. Stop. So they made a change. The Lord changed them, right, to deal with the situation of being burned. But even in their change, the angel still looked like an angel, and it was obvious he was different from the other men. Y'all with me on that one? Go ahead, sir. 26. Come on. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God. Wait, I thought they were some bums, man. First of all, <laughs> there were some clowns, and his perm was flowing. Now he's like, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Look, when we serve in our God, the Lord will humble our enemies. Mm -hmm. That's the key of David. Y'all ain't hearing me. Mm -hmm. The Lord will humble your enemies. Matter of fact, I had this dude indirectly call me a nigga, and now he reports to me to actually do stuff. Mm -hmm. On some real talk. Right. I'm just telling y'all, he will humble your enemies. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, bro. God, God, come forth and come hither. Back it up, start from okay. the top. Then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, ye servants of the Most High God, come forth and come hither. Come on. Then Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came forth of the midst of the fire. And the princes, governors, and captains, and the kings, counselors, being gathered together, saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power. Nor was a hair of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed on them. Here's the point. We follow our God, even though we're dealing with fires metaphorically on a daily basis, he'll carry us through to where it looked like we ain't even dealt with no fire. In this particular instance, as it relates to the, to the mark of the beast, if you take the mark of the beast, you will be, I will be in fire perpetually forever. We have to stand fast for our God, yes, have sir. faith, count on him, and literally lean on him. Because that's what he's there for. Right. Y'all with me on all yes, of that? Yes, sir. Exactly. Uh, we're going to finish it out. Revelation 21. Yes, sir. The lake of fire is not created for us. It's created for wicked angels. The problem is human beings get influenced continually and willfully by wicked angels. Mm. It's all a choice, the power of choice. You make one good choice, you got 15 more good choices. You make one bad choice, you got less good choices and more bad choices. And I'll prove it out the scriptures on that note. Make the right choices. We must make the right choices. Revelation 21. I'm cool on the lava pit. Revelation 21, 7 through 8. Take a side. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Stop. Did he say inherit some things? All oh. things. Did he say you're just going to be immortal? All oh. things. What does all things mean? All oh. things. Can I get some instances of all things? What will you be able to do if you have the ability to do all things? I make a planet. Shift, change, and fly. Make a planet. Yes. What else? Tell angels, Tell angels what to do. What else? That's right. right. Judge all men. What else? Unsinful. Unsinful. Create. Yeah. Will we have sickness? No. 
So all those bad things, we don't have to deal with that. But all things means all things. Right. On par, equal with God. Co-heirs with Christ. All power in heaven and earth have been given unto me. Co-heirs with Christ. The first of the first fruits of them that slept with more brethren to come. Right, right. We'll inherit all things, not just immortality. Immortality is child's play. To immortal beings, that's the standard. To us, it's like, oh, live forever. But really, in all honesty, time, here's we relate things in time. All power and authority yep. beyond time. Right. Start at the top again, bro. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. Come on. But the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars. No, just, just black liars. And all liars. Just so somebody who just tells one little small lie. And all liars. I mean, I lie sometimes, but not all the time. Not all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. In conclusion, read your Bibles, pray to the Lord for understanding, and keep yourselves from sin. And I hope y'all got some understanding.